So this is important because we get a lot of people who are very nervous about traveling abroad, specifically if they have mental health stuff. I've talked openly about my own depression and anxiety. How did you get the courage, I'd say, to travel solo? Because a lot of people just, even without having trauma, are nervous traveling solo. But even having all of that in place, how are you able to just make that leap and be able to travel solo? Anything that could help anybody else who's out there listening? Honestly, Francis, I, I really don't know. It's one of those things that if I would have kept asking my friends to go places, me living in North Carolina at the moment, I probably would have only went to uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Miami, Florida, or Las Vegas, Nevada, because that's all my friends were used to, and the occasional Jamaica. But with the growing influence of Instagram and Facebook, I wanted to see these beautiful beaches, and I've heard stories of other people sitting on beaches and magically their ailment just went away. And I'm not really sure if it went away or it was just masked with fun and more excitement that was really going on in the moment. Because if you've been following me, you know that I do some pretty awesome stuff. I have as much fun as I can. And I realized that when you're having so much fun and you're living in the moment that you don't have time to think about some of the negative situations that are taking place. When you have an adventure or when you have constant constantly an influx of new people always surrounding you with hugs, smiles, uh, welcoming you into in their homes. I don't have the time to reflect on what went bad five or 10 years ago. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not telling anyone to use travel to cover up any type of ailments because yes, there are some days in which I travel solo, especially when I was in Myanmar or Cambodia or even coming here to Thailand, when after you get done being around five or six people for a couple of days and then you have to board that flight by yourself, you feel that sense of loneliness again. So for me, it was just getting out there, living. I had to realize that back in 9 May 2003, when I got injured, that I was spared my life. I hear stories now of some of my friends having cancer, having brain tumors and stuff. And they're always saying, get out there and live your life because you never know when you're gonna be in a bad car accident. You never know when you're gonna have this. So for me, I always look to see if I were to be in a bad car accident today or tomorrow, did the life that I have already lived, would I be proud about it? Or am I waiting for someone else to give me permission? I think that was one of the main reasons and one of the main things I looked at when it was time for me to leave the military, leave the corporate world, as, as well as the government sector. I think everybody should take at least a year or six months or however much time you can afford to take off and rediscover who you are, laugh, wake up when you want to, and just pretty much have fun. But yeah, that's the reason why I decided to travel. Wow. I can say traveling, there are some travel traveling woes and a lot of times we don't talk about some of, of those things like one thing you mentioned is the loneliness um, when you're on that flight by yourself or even when you're looking at that bomb ass sunset or that beautiful you know mountain range and you're just like wow it would be nice to share this with someone but at the end of the day I do believe in those moments you are at your happiest self. So with 100 countries, how are you able to actually go to 100 countries? Like, what is it that you do? So I've been in stock exchange trading for about 10 years. And um, I've traveled a lot with my company. I live in different countries. And when you live there, like, you know, sometimes I was living in Singapore, so I would go in all the ones of Egypt. That's how I did it. That's how I did all countries except North Korea and Mongolia and Asia. Because I was there, lived in Europe, did all Europe and half of Africa. I lived in um, the States and then going to South America a lot. It was mostly for work, then it was for me, then I created my company, iStell, which is a video media touristic company. So I would do video for tourism board, tourist agent, uh, you know, all this type of stuff. Uh, sometimes you help doing campaign and that got me traveled a lot too. That's how I was, I was probably like at five, six, countries a year like 10 years ago and then five years ago it just pumped to like 10 to 12 because I had other contracts coming up for my side hustle which became now the main hustle yeah congratulations <laughs> three you. days and full time how does it feel man it's uh it's great you know the feeling of like yeah now it's all me now you know I have to work before my paycheck you know <laughs> not sit at a desk it feels great. It's cool. Yeah, because some people would be afraid to make that kind of transition. What? I was theorized. 
he said that. Are you kidding me? I worked so hard at school so I can get this office job and not worry. And now I'm like, I'm taking the risk. Like it's funny. Like it's it's. I was. I was panicking. Even when I signed, I was like, man, am I doing the right thing like, right now? Like, God, please give me a sign, you know? <laughs> like, help me, you know? And uh, and yeah, I was. Got, I got more than that in mind. I'm telling you, like 2019 for me was going to feel great because I got the video company, but I also have good project coming on and I've worked on. And um, and yeah, I'm trying to be more vocal. Like I'm going to I'm gonna be on, on social media a lot more talking about travel news because nobody does it. Like nobody will tell you what's going on in the travel industry. So I decided that I'll do the, what I call Gabok Travel Talk and talk about what's going on in the industry of travel so people can be aware. For me, it's, uh, it's cool to share and it's fun. So I'm, I'm starting doing it and I got other projects. Like, you know, 2019, I won't be like, it's not going to be like a boring year at all, but it's going to be stressful. I love that. Here's the thing. It's like, what's the price and what is it worth? You could sit at that office desk and wonder what would life look like or you can take that risk. You know, life is a paradox in that way because we we get so accustomed to be like, okay, let's just get the degree, get that desk job, get that security. But we already know, like, there is no such thing as security. That's all an illusion. That's that's right. Oh, man, that's right. Can you just give us a little bit about your whole travel journey? Okay, definitely. So growing up, I think I've always been curious and I still really am. Curiosity drives most of what I do. And when you, I read a lot of books, so I, I heard of a lot of places, knew a lot about nature, but we didn't really travel internationally as a family. So I didn't take my first international trip until I was in high school. We went to Canada, uh, we saw uh, Quebec and Montreal. And I was like, okay, there's, you know, there's something out here. There's a, I wouldn't have said vibe back then because it's kind of trendy now, but you felt something different. It was exciting to be in a place where, you know, there's a little bit of French going on and food tasted differently. And so when I got an opportunity to go overseas through my um, corporate job after college, I went to uh, France and went to Paris. And I was just, I wasn't in love with Paris. I was in love with the idea of being in a place so different. So I asked if they would teach me French. They didn't do it. I asked them if they would give me a, a position overseas. They said, no. I said, you sure? They said, we're sure. I said, cool. And I quit six months later and just went on my own. Wow, that's really, I mean, that's pretty courageous because when you say you went on your own, did you head back to the States for a little bit or did you continue traveling? So I left the States, that was the summer of 2014, headed to Paris. I didn't know anybody there, but I, I had enough money to last about three months and I stayed there for 18. So we was we was hustling. We was out there. Wow. And we talk about this a lot because there are lots of opportunities abroad. And I think one of the hesitations that a lot of people have is like, how am I going to make money? Right. And we actually was talking to a couple and they're like, you know, if you come here, yeah, definitely secure something. However, when you get here, there's so many kind of, you know, under the table things that you can do, uh, nothing dangerous, but like, just like you said, just teaching or cat sitting or all those other uh, random things that you can actually make some pretty good money. Yeah, shout out to all the cat sitters out here racking in the, the bot. <laughs> <laughs> What has your experience been traveling as a black man? Um, okay, that is a great question. I would say by and large and vastly large, it has been amazing. And the thing that I've learned or realized throughout all this traveling is that I've been treated way, way, way better in other countries than I have in my own country. And that, I mean, that says a lot because I feel like living in the state, you're constantly reminded that you are black and you constantly have struggles because you are black. And if you try to explain it to anybody other than another black person, they will oftentimes question what happened or question why you think X, Y, and Z happened versus when I've lived overseas, which I've, I've lived overseas since 2011, I do realize that I'm black, but for a different reason, because in other countries, I'm more admired because I'm black and I'm more cool because I'm black. And even in, I mean, I've, I've had this conversation with many Europeans and my Swedish friends and my, you know, my Danish friends, they've all, not, I won't say all, but 
in many cases, they just said like, you know, black people are the coolest people in the world. And if there weren't for black people, if it wasn't for black people, then this world would suck. And I agree wholeheartedly. And I can't really speak for African people because I'm not African, right? I was born in the, in the United States and our cultures are very, very different. But black Americans specifically, I can speak to that because I'm a black American. Black Americans specifically just have a way that we that, that we talk, a way that we carry ourselves, a way that we, you know, our sense of humor, our slang, our entertainment, our music, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we're changing the world in how they behave. And a lot of times they don't even realize that what they're doing or saying comes from Black American people. And no discredit to Black Africans, of course, you know, I have love for them as well, but I'm just specifically speaking about Black Americans and we influence the world. So when I'm back in Baltimore, I mean, anywhere in the States, but definitely back in Baltimore in my hometown, when I see these young kids and, you know, they may or may not be doing the right thing, whatever the case may be, the point that I try to get, get across to them is that they represent something bigger than themselves. And it's very difficult for them to kind of grasp what exactly that is because they've never been anywhere else. But for me, having been around the world and seeing how people react to me, I'm just like, you know, Black people really, really, really a huge contributor to worldwide trends, music, food, etc.